Uh, Alex did a very nice job of explaining visual commerce and kind of an overview of what you do. Mm -hmm. But maybe take me through how that works. Mm -hmm. What does Olopic actually do to turn Instagram snaps into commerce? Okay. So yeah, so the, 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 the rationale of, of why we started the company was that everybody now has one of these on their pockets. No? Mm -hmm. and, and as humans, we're very visual. So, and we are able now to generate amazing photos thanks to Instagram that has made us all like amazing photographers, no? So the, the whole idea is that the volume of content when we started the company was like 100 million photos uploaded to the internet each day. Right. Now it's 1.8 billion a day. So, um, so what we're doing is helping brands to tap into the content that is related to their brand. So there's immense amount of content. Uh, identify it, curate it, and link it to products and then put it where it matters most to the brand, which is in, in their e-commerce experience. And you think that matters when people actually go, because online retail is already a huge area, right? Mm -hmm. We're going on there, we're buying lots of different things, and typically, you know, we see a photo and we see a description. How does UGC really play into that? So I think it's authenticity in the end. Like you're, you know, you as a shopper, whenever you're in, in your favorite online store and you're gonna buy that jacket, if you can see, you know that the photo that, you know, the model wearing that jacket, you know, it's been photoshopped, it's been, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a model. Yeah. Uh, and then if you can see like real people next to it wearing that same jacket that they're on the streets and they're enjoying, like it gives you more information. Right. So that's the part that I think it's powerful. That is that you as a consumer are able to shop a little bit more like in real life when you're seeing people around you and getting inspired by others. Okay. And, and what we've proven is that with this simple concept in the end that we call visual commerce is that you increase conversion and you know and shoppers at the end are, are happier because make, they make better decisions. And and how are you able to prove that? I mean how, how can you tell that a photo shared on a company site has actually generated a sale? So at the end we we are very analytics driven. So whenever we, we partner with a brand we are not only putting the photos there but we're giving them all the tracking so we know when somebody has seen a photo and we track it all the way until they've made a purchase. Mm -hmm. So we actually can see if you, know, you saw that jacket, we can actually track it all the way to the conversion. So after doing that, you, then you do A-B testing and a lot of, uh, and, and, and you can prove that you know, if 50% don't see the photos and 50% see them, the one that, you know, the sample that actually saw them convert higher and buy more. So in the early days, tell me how, how brands reacted to this idea. Because I know initially, you know, covering tech for, for Reuters for, you know, during that time when social media got as popular as it was, brands were, um, I think, very uh, almost kind of fearful of, of UGC because it meant the control of, over the image of the brand you know, going to consumers rather than having it themselves. Mm -hmm. Is, has, that, has that changed now? I think it's changing. It hasn't changed fully. Like if you, for me, the word UGC is a little bit of an old word. Yeah. And the connotation that has whenever you think UGC usually is like, oh, it's bad quality okay. content in the web. And that there's a lot of brands that still have that, uh, you know, that, you know, that feeling whenever you're talking to them about the, about customer photos. Okay. We haven't found a better way. So if you find a better term for UGC, let me know. Yeah. Uh, but what we're seeing now that the volume is so big is that it's just you just have to pick the photos that they're the right ones, and uh, and then and then there because there's so much content, there's a lot of good content in in that content. Okay, great. Um, now when I so we met before and I interviewed you once before and I had a chance to uh, talk to one of the companies you're dealing with. Uh, and that was New Balance, uh -huh. and you, you ran a campaign with Heidi Klum that, that I think was a, a very good example of how Olopec has helped the company mm -hmm. you know, build uh, sort of grow sales mm -hmm. through this kind of content. So can you tell me a little bit about that example and why that works so well? So, so yeah, so the whole idea was a new line designed by Heidi Klum that you know, she is gorgeous and she actually can design clothing. So she designed the sneakers, the 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 old, uh, you know, the jumper and everything, and then they created the landing page where you can buy everything, and you know the conversion was okay. But then they decided to 
partner with us, so we started listening to everybody that is wearing the, that clothing from Heidi Klum using mm -hmm. a, s a specific hashtag. And we actually started to put next to her real people exercising, wearing those, uh, running in the park. And, and just by doing that, like conversion went up. And instead of like, and it went up 39%, which is usually not like it's extra high compared to what we usually mm -hmm. uh, uh, increase. Because like imagine, you know, if they were doing uh, 10 million, 39% means that they're generating 3.9 million more, which, mm -hmm. is, which is huge. Um, but uh, but it, yeah, and what, what it proved in the end is that people wanted to see her, which is she looks great and she's gorgeous, but you want to see also real people wearing it and how it looks and how it feels. Mm -hmm. So I had a chance to talk to someone from uh, New Balance who basically you know, agreed that it was a very successful campaign and, and through Olapic. But he also talked about how it was an example or it was a demonstration of the power of the hashtag as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the hashtag means these days? Because, you know, it was just almost like an accident, right? Mm -hmm. The way it was started on Twitter, yeah, yeah. that you can, you can follow. They were like, well, what, what, do we, what should we use to kind of connect conversations? Mm -hmm. And it was decided that they would do the hashtag. And then Facebook later followed suit. So it's become this powerful tool. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for marketers? So I think marketers are able to, to start a conversation, as you're saying, and, and, and aggregate it in one point. And what is allowing not only the marketers, but the consumers is to participate. So the, and sometimes what we see with the brands that we're working with is that most of the hashtags that they're using, they're created by the consumer, and then the brand actually jumps in because it's about them, and they amplify it. Right. But, uh, but it's a super powerful way to, to get the conversation going so it doesn't get disseminated now in the, in the river of Twitter and Facebook yeah. and, and Instagram, but you can actually search that, that content. And what is the concern, again, for, you know, brands like to have control over the way their image is perceived or the brands are perceived. Um, there is a great potential for hijacking. You know, we've seen that a, a lot with, with hashtags. What is the danger of associating your brand with a, with a hashtag? So there is, and you can be, like, the thing is, it could be hijacked in the sense that if you upload, you can upload whatever you want or share a photo or video with a particular hashtag. I think in the end, the volume is so large around it that mm -hmm. just a few pieces of content, they don't make a difference. The important part, like, because all that is earned media, you know, if you use a hashtag New Balance, no yeah. hashtag or a, a hashtag ASOS, it's, it's used by a lot of people. The thing is, like, that earned media that you have, photos and videos and in, uh, in, uh, in the social web is which, which ones you bring to your own media as a brand. Okay. And that's, that's the important part because in the end, everybody understands now that what you see on the social web is free, it's open, it's democratic, anybody can put whatever they want. Mm -hmm. the, the, the part that is important is that you bring to your site, to the branded site of, uh, of for in this case, New Balance, only the content that really is on brand. For them. Okay, um, so you have more control. Exactly. So th that's that's very important because, like, if you're in the New Balance site, for instance, yeah. you expect that everything there has been curated by the brand. So if if something wrong is or something not appropriate is there, yeah, it then you you know you will feel that is that they are at fault. And are you just looking at Instagram for for images? Are you also looking at Facebook and Twitter? Yeah. So for us, the, the visual web is, is not only Instagram, even though we find that Instagram is the most powerful social media network out there. And we've done research around it and it's in, because the engagement that it has, being mobile and visual at the same time, is, is through the roof. It's almost like 20 times more engaging than, than Facebook. Uh, so it's uh, so in that sense, if you multiply the when you say that, I mean, where where does that come from? Twenty times more engaging. So if you count engagement as uh, the number of likes or or, okay. or comments that you have on the content, yeah. uh, any piece of content on Instagram usually is twenty times has twenty times the the, the, the likes and the and the and of yeah. Facebook if you put them uh, one to one with the number of impressions that it has. Okay. So in that sense, engagement is higher, but we don't think in Instagram is the only one. Like we, we also power and we tap into Tumblr, we tap into, into Twitter because it's, it's turning more and more visual with Vine, those, yeah. those uh, uh, you know, short videos, they, they can convey a lot of information, and, and also YouTube, it's a sense. Do you have any sense of what the 
what the potential market is for visual commerce? I mean, is that even a thing yet? I think that we're creating the space. It's something that it wasn't a thing uh, as a, so, so I wouldn't know exactly. I think that in the end, any brand uses photos to, like, to, to sell their products. No? It's mm -hmm. like they're, they're inherently visual in that sense. So I think that it's something that every single brand could actually use. We're starting on e-commerce initially because we can actually track all the way to conversion and use right. more data. But I think it's it's something that any brand should you know can needs to tap into into a stream of content to to use because they now have audiences and they they you know and they need to provide amazing content. So, but I, I couldn't give you the, the the size of the market. Okay, um, big enough though. Big, <laughs> so, so far, yeah. So for us, like we started three you know three crazy guys, and now we're eighty amazing people in the team. So it's yeah. it's, it's so far so good. Okay, tell me about the start then. You're, you're three Spaniards, three Spanish business students mm -hmm. in New York. Yeah. You met there, is that right? Yeah, we met there in a room pretty much like this. Yeah. Uh, so we so were tell me how that happened. Mm -hmm. how, how do you go to New York mm -hmm. and end up starting a company with two of your countrymen? So, uh, like, well, in Spanish, we're a little bit that way. We hang out together. I don't know why. So there's that mafia thing that happens, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we came for different reasons to the MBA at Columbia. And the thing is, like, I think the three of us, even though we're very different in in uh, in many ways, like we all had the bug that we really wanted to start something. Right. And the MBA is an amazing, like time to actually have time to think and, 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 and put yourself out there. Okay. So that's when you know, we saw the visual web picking up, Instagram starting, uh, Tumblr, and, and our, you know, in our lives like we were communicating with photos, even with our families when we were you know, in, in, in New York. Yeah. So we were like, okay, why if consumers are doing this, why brands are not tapping into, into it? And that's when Pau and Luis are amazing engineers, and we actually, instead of only talking about it, we started building it. Okay. And so when did you actually launch the first product? So first product uh, in the graduation of the, a little bit earlier than, than graduating from the MBA. So May 2010. Okay. And it had nothing to do with what we're doing now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so you, but it was, it was around you pivoted photos. more than once. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was a run of photos and aggregating photo and video. Yeah. So because I, you know, Pau had did his, uh, his uh, thesis in, in image processing and recognition. So so it, it made sense to build it uh, around, but like we've been evolving the, the concept. And we're still, when we partner with brands, we're very honest, like we're pioneering this space, yeah. but we don't have everything figured out yet. We want <coughs> partners that you know, push us the limits and, and, and explore with us where we can get. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're pioneering this space, what, what stops another company or a Google from, you know, t to say, hey, that looks great, we'll do that, we'll invest. What is it about Olapic that differentiates you, that makes you feel that you're going to be the one who, who has success with this idea? So competition <coughs> is great. It means that you're not fully crazy. Like if you're the only company, you know, only person pursuing an idea, it means that, you know, that probably it's not big enough or it's not the right one. So I think that what differentiates us uh, since the beginning is that we've been very pragmatic in the beginning to, to really drive value for the brands and for the consumers. And we've been having that since the beginning. And, uh, and in the end, this is a process of learning. So we've invested a lot in, you know, in uh, machine learning to actually identify which photos are the ones that they're, uh, that they're converting the most. And we've invested a lot in getting deeper into e-commerce so we can actually you know, track all the way to, to conversion. Mm -hmm. um, but in the, in the end, like what we're doing, like it's something that any other company can, can, can start and compete with us. Mm -hmm. Things like we are better because we're ahead and we're fast and, and, mm -hmm. and, and we're building product faster, I guess. Okay. And what is your relationship with the, with the social platforms? I mean, I found out about you through a friend at Facebook mm -hmm. who basically said that you are an exemplar, sorry, an exemplar of, of a company kind of doing something to sort of create ROI and you know, there's this whole thing about engagement and then there's there's sales you know and you're, you're bringing the two together yeah. and that's something like, like if you see Facebook and Facebook commerce or yeah. like it's been F commerce like it was a big hype and then it didn't produce the results right. and social media has been the 
eternal promise that oh it's going to generate you know ROI and you can actually track a pound sign or a dollar sign at the end and it's hard because mm -hmm. like in the end there are two at least in in the western like what we are like it's very separated in right. Asia is actually the lines are blurring and it, it's happening more so we work very closely like with the guys at Facebook and Instagram and 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 you know and Pinterest and, and and all the others like we like to know what they're working on they like to know how the brands that we're working are seeing things and we try to have a close relationship and they're happy to support you yeah like in the end brand like oh, Instagram or, or or Facebook in the end they they want like they're focusing on building those communities and now Facebook more monetizing it obviously but mm -hmm. but it's they need the ecosystem of companies around them mm -hmm. uh, or and it's not that they need them but if they have them they it makes them stronger okay. so in the end it's something that they really encourage tech startups here in New York in the Valley uh, or like to, to actually build on top of them okay so last week or the week before we had London Technology Week uh, mm -hmm here in London. Uh, and Michael Bloomberg, uh, the former mayor of New York, was here and he talked in, uh, with Bo Boris Johnson, our, yeah. our mayor, uh, basically talked about how the two companies are, are sort of competing in some ways and, and collaborating course, yeah. in other ways. You've come from New York uh, to set up the office in Soho to sort of reach out to brands uh, across Europe. Tell me why you did that so early, because you did that fairly early on. What, what was the draw to set up a, a London office? Yeah, so for us, like we, like it's been the ride has been amazing. No? Like we we grew very rapidly from a small team to to being now 80. But like when we decided that we were moving to London, we were about 55, 60 people in the company, and and we started partnering. I think last year was like 113 brands, mm -hmm. and our investors and our advisors that they were telling us like focus on the U.S. because the mm -hmm. U.S. is an amazing market that has a lot of brands, and we're like. Okay, we're three Spaniards that we are well traveled and we've seen the yeah. world. And it's like the world is bigger than just the US, even though it's an amazing market, amazing brands. But it, like, why not moving here? And, uh, yeah. and I set up the, the, as an objective, like to find someone that with even more experience, like with more experience than I had to actually replace me on, on, on in New York. And mm -hmm. I packed my bags and, and came here to. London to start again. So here we're back to basics in the sense that we're eight people in the team, but we have a great product. We have a um, and, and and what we want is to do it again. You know. And how how receptive are our brands here? I mean, the U.S. tends to be a place where they embrace like a crazy idea. Uh -huh. Sometimes a little bit easier. Are you finding any more resistance? Not really. Like no. what we're seeing is that at least the U.K. Uh, it's fairly advanced in, in, in how they're seeing e-commerce, they're super advanced. They've done it, uh, I think like the first e-commerce transaction happened, happened in the UK actually, mm -hmm. I, don't know, I think it was like, I don't know how many years ago. Right. Uh, but, um, so they're fairly, in social they're a little bit more like hesitant to, right. to do stuff, but so far it's, it's gotten easier. Like when we're starting trying to convince the first few brands to that this was a good idea, it was a lot m harder now. Like we have a hundred and like almost one hundred and fifty brands, so it's in examples that we can show. So it's much yeah. and numbers to back it up. So it's much much faster, and much easier. And how would you say on the whole? I mean, I know you haven't been here that long, yeah. but how would you say the tech scene in London compares to New York? I I have to do a lot more. Like I've been, and I have to admit, like I've been in my uh, meeting a lot of people, and but I like super focus on building the team, and I haven't had the time to to go to events and, and, yeah. and really feel the, the, the scene. Okay. I'm, I've been, like, I think that it is super similar for the events that I've been yeah. in. It's super similar and it's growing. I think it might be, I don't know, like maybe it's that I have done like a few months behind, but like I think the growth is, is, is the same. Like we saw it in the US when we started the NBA like the tech scene was starting right. but like the, the the New York tech meetup that is like the big meetup that happens uh, uh, every month like it was two three hundred and, and when I left it was like I don't know how many thousands of people are signed up mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that happens every month so I think here it's, it's happening the same it's super vibrant and it's here in Stordridge. So. And how many how much time are you spending in, in London how much time are you spending traveling around Europe? 
So right now, most of the time in London, I am traveling, like you know, France and Nordics. Uh, yeah. So next week I'm in in in, in Norway. So it's uh, I'm traveling quite a lot and uh, and enjoying it because like in the end, there's a, there is a part that you know, every every market and every in it's very very different. So okay. it's adapting and, and learning right now. Can I ask you? I just want to ask you about your business model before we go to the audience. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because obviously you're connecting something that's given away for free to something where there's a sale. Mm -hmm. Where where do you create value for yourself? How do you make money? So for us, like what we're like, we built the technology, the platform that it's scanning, it's uh, it's, it's moderating, and it's uh, tying everything, and it, it tracks. So it's in the end, it's software as a service. We build the platform, and we uh, and what we charge is a year licensing fee to the to the brands. Right. So <coughs> so they they can use the the, the technology as a license, yeah. and then we have a performance fee because we can actually see what's the increase in conversion. Wow. We can get a, a, a small cut of the uplift that we generate. So only on the value that we generate. That's a Lucas move. That's like a George Lucas move. <laughs> he did that. He did that with Star Wars, didn't he? Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, it's been a fantastic conversation as always. Thank you very much, oh, Jose De Cabo, me. for joining us. Um, as this is the last ca Cast Tech Talk, I want to thank Thomson Reuters uh, for sponsoring it. It's been uh, really great for me to to be able to bring entrepreneurs. Who, who you know, I know and I'm super impressed with and share their stories with, with a wider audience, both uh, at CAS uh, and on the internet. Uh, and Alex and Gleb uh, and the guys uh, from, from CAS here who, who've organized this and the Unruly folks have been amazing. So thanks a lot for a great year. And you never know, we may see you next year as well. Thanks. Thank you.